Hi there, welcome back to my channel. So Musa Kaula is a celebrity blogger. Most people know him, I'm sure you probably do. And I've done two videos about him and the issues surrounding him taking his boyfriend's life. And here is a video where Umusa addressed the issue and really tells us the story of what happened on that day where he ended up in Shaba. Uandile, his ex-boyfriend. I remember following him. He's walking up front. I'm following him believing that we're going to the car. So we couldn't, we didn't even get to the car. He picked up a bottle. He turned, picked up a bottle, threw a bottle at me. I dodged the bottle. Like all of this happened so quick. That is number one. I continue following because we by the door, we by the gate already. He picked up another, it was a beer bottle, the black one, black label. He picks this bottle. This time he doesn't throw me at it. He just came and started hating me with it. So now what was going to happen at that gate, there is a gate and then there is a sink just by the gate. I suppose they say they wash dishes or whatever the hell they do there, but there is a sink there. So that's where we was going to fight. So now he takes the bottle, he hits me with the bottle, then I'm blocking it with the cast because on my left arm, I had a cast. So I'm blocking, I'm blocking with the cast, I'm blocking with the cast. And later I was going to have a fracture of this arm. So when I went back to the doctor, just for context purposes from that night, because obviously my arm was weak, so I sustained a fracture because I was already fighting with this arm that had just been operated on. So I remember blocking myself, blocking with... And then the one thing that I saw on, on the side of the thing where the sink was, there was a knife. I picked up a knife, I stabbed him on his, on his groin area place to get him off me, which was one step. It doesn't matter because he died, but it was one step to get him off me we continued fighting. We bite. He's biting me. I'm biting him. And then I thought it was going. After that, some guy came. And then everybody was up. Then they separated the fight. And then I left immediately because I thought, oh my god, if he comes up again, he's literally going to finish me. I ran to my car. I drove off. Then okay, this guy that uh, remember was dropping off a guy that was painting. So this guy didn't see anything. He was sitting in the car waiting for me to come. Hence, I said this thing happened quickly. We didn't even speak. We just got into it. He fought me. I took a knife. I stabbed him to get him off me. And that was that. So by the time everybody comes out, everything had happened. And then they separated us. And then I left. So now I drop off this guy. Well, obviously, I just came from a fight. I'm telling him, we're doing something like this has happened. But I truly believed it was going to be fine. And then he wasn't. So anyway, that was the unfortunate part. But I also know that I could have died that night. So I don't take that for granted. I walk away, take this guy home, and then this guy is like, you know what, Musa, let's go for a drink. And then I'm like, you know what, okay, that's fine, because I wasn't doing anything anyway. There was nothing to get to at home. The flirt is bent down. Then I go with him, we go for a drink, and obviously I wasn't fine. And I remember I got there, got like a hands to try that I usually drink, and then I went to sit back in the car because I was, I had to like process what had happened or whatever. So I remember then two hours later, that's when I was, the police were going to come and get me. They're like, okay, you're under arrest for murder. I'm like, what? What are you guys talking about? And I remember prior to that, when I saw the police, when I was like, oh my God, how can one do I thought he had called the police for me because we fought. I'm like, why would he call the police for me? After he had just assaulted me and did all these horrible things to me. That's what I thought. And then, okay, the police come and get me. They get me out of the car. They're like, you know what? You are under arrest. I'm like, for what? They're like, for murder. I'm like, what? What are you guys talking about? Like it, it, it just didn't click. It did not fucking click. Okay. Then they take me in. They're looking for the, the like, where's the knife? I'm like, the knife is there where we were fighting. It was there. It was, I got it there anyway. So I didn't take it. It, you know, okay. Then they take me in and then I was going to come out on Monday, come out on bail. Okay. Friday, I spent the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this means this incident happened on Friday and not Saturday. So it was, I spent the Friday night, Saturday night gave my statement on Sunday and then Monday went to obviously to the what to the court and whatever. So also one thing maybe I hadn't mentioned that at the time of my station, the first person that attended me when I collapsed, it so happened that it was the state, one of the station people, he's a police, whatever. So he used to bring his wife to the hospital. So he, I wouldn't say he knew me. He was aware of me because I didn't know him. So by Monday, I suppose he had told them about my incident that happened 
because they asked me at the hospital what happened. I told them that my boyfriend had butchered me or my boyfriend had stabbed me. So I like to believe that's what aided me into getting out. And then everybody was speaking, uh, the neighbors, they came and attested to the abuse that I had been through that had, that had witnessed and whatnot. So as far as everything is concerned, that's what has happened. I never acted crazy. I never did drugs. I still don't do drugs. All I know is I was badly abused for two years till the last day when Wandele died. And that's exactly what had happened. 